There has been a term that I've been using in some of these introductory videos that hasn't been formally introduced, and I will do that now. We have seen that a tally plot is one way we might graphically visualize an FDT or GFDT. Another graphical representation for a GFDT is the histogram. While the histogram can be defined in a far more complicated manner, and you might encounter this more refined definition in a later stats or probability course, for our purposes here, a histogram is simply the bar graph of a GFDT, a grouped frequency distribution table. The advantage over the GFDT is that it makes visible the shape of the data, or to be more precise, the shape of the distribution of the data. It is similar to a frequency polygon, but instead of the heights of the points along the vertical axis representing the frequencies for each class, it is the height of the bar that represents the frequency, assuming equal class widths, which we will generally require going forward. If you are wondering when you might choose a frequency polygon over a histogram, I would suggest that frequency polygons are good if you do not have a grouped data summary, and histograms are better for grouped data summaries. Let's take a look at some of the common distribution shapes you will see. The first is the most familiar, and in some ways it is the most common, and this is the bell curve. This is also called the normal distribution or the Gaussian distribution. There are further varieties and names you might encounter. The conventional or standard bell curve is called mesocurtic. This is the quote-unquote mathematically precise normal distribution. Another variation is if the top gets flattened as if someone sat on the top of the original bell curve, this is called a platycurtic bell curve. And the other option is when the center gets a bit more spiky. This is called a leptocurtic bell curve. In general, these are the ways we refer to the normal or nearly normal distributions. One common feature of bell curves and nearly normal distributions is that they are symmetric about the mean. The next common distributional shapes are the skewed distributions. These distributions have long extended tails in one of the two extreme directions. You can imagine grabbing the tail of the bell curve and pulling it to the right to get the shape shown here. This example is skewed to the right because that is the direction of the tail. We also call it a positive skewed distribution, since the tail seems to be heading toward positive infinity along the number line, the horizontal axis in this case. Comparably, we could have a left-tailed or negatively skewed distribution. Here the tail is going off to the left. We note that for a left-tailed distribution, most of the values are near the top end of the range. Correspondingly, for right-tailed distributions, most of the values are near the bottom end of the range. There's a special skewed distribution that shows up a lot in statistics and probability, and that is the exponential distribution. In this type of right-tailed skewed distribution, the height of each consecutive bar decreases by the same ratio or percentage or proportion, and that is how it derives the name exponential distribution. The percentage decrease from the first bar to the second bar is the same as from the second to the third bar, and that continues until, for all practical purposes, the bars are essentially at a height of zero. One key feature to the normal and skewed distributions is that they have only one mode, one most frequently occurring class. Other interesting distributions are multimodal distributions. Here we have an example of a bimodal distribution. In this case, we see that there is a major mode, the higher peak, and a minor mode, the lower peak, but still higher than most of its surrounding or neighboring classes. The other example here is rather rare, but it shows a particular point. This is an equimodal trimodal distribution, a distribution with three modes, all of the same height. And this last option is an example of a beta distribution. Here we have a bimodal distribution, which appears equimodal, but the key feature is that the modes have been pushed to the extreme ends of the range of the distribution. Other common distributions not shown here are the Brownian distribution and the uniform distribution. The Brownian distribution is just random spikes all over the place with no rhyme or reason. The uniform distribution is the boring distribution of all bars having essentially the same height. These are a sampling of some of the common and a few less common distributions when we try to qualitatively describe the shape of the distributions of our data. The key is that the GFDT and the histogram is the summary and display tool we have in our toolkit to explore this feature of our data.